Привет всем! Welcome to this review looking at Zvezda's new 48 scale kit of the Sukhoi 25 Frogfoot. Hello friends, okay, typical review again, I've got the kit itself from Zvezda, hope you can get hold of it if you're a fan of this type of aircraft, and I've got a rack of extra 3D printed details, so I'll do these at the end, let's have a look at the kit first, um, people are interested in this kit, it is something new from Zvezda in the way that they've tooled the kit, uh, some nice box art as usual, a uh, quick descriptor of the markings on the back of the box a photograph of a built model kit and also to note is the fact that this is produced under the license of Sukhoi company and uh, 359 parts all this description I'll write it down so you can read it in your own time let's have a look at what's inside. Okay, got a box in a box from Zvezda, very sturdy packaging. And struggling to get this out. There we go, box in a box. Let's get this open and see what's inside. Okay, one bag here, another one there full of sprues, and another huge bag full of sprues. The instructions, and as per a lot of kits nowadays we get a color print uh, of all the different markings etc we'll have a look at that in detail in a second let's open up these sprue bags and see what's inside so in the first bag i've got four off this sprue let's uh, bring in the macro and have a look at that and also we've got four off this sprue of course we're looking at the armament great to see the armament is included within the box let's have a look in detail First sprue we're looking at, I think it's the uh, the rocket pod launcher. And uh, detail looks very good, actually, with the uh, nose cone of the rockets, of the launchers, the fittings on the pods, etc. Of course, you've got to deal with the seam, etc., the usual type of scenario, but indications are very well detailed. Let's have a look at that second um, sprue, of which there are four. Okay, and this sprue looks like conventional dumb bomb. And another, I think this is a large surface to air missile here. The fins have been molded on integrally. Looks pretty good. It's quite crisp detail. I like to see that they've got all the weld detail actually on the bombs itself, on the casings. Looks pretty good. Looks satisfactory to me. And of course, it's all in the box, which is really what you want. On this sprue, we've got sort of cockpit parts, the pilot and small detail parts. Uh, again, let me bring into the macro. We're going to have a look in detail at the ejector seat. Have a look at the render detail. So going to start off with that pilot. Uh, not bad at all, actually. Um, previously, you sort of got like a one sort of blob of a pilot. You can see this is composed of, you know, the legs are separate here. You've got the pilot with the mask on. Not bad at all for injection molded. Not bad at all. It looks pretty good. And this is where we're going to start seeing the difference. And of course, I've looked at the fuselage soon. We've got, uh, obviously, we've got the, as usual, they all said our panel lines on, on these kits. But now we've got the extruded detail. We've got rivets that are proud of the surface. And it's uh, it's quite well done. It's definitely in scale. Uh, it doesn't look out of place at all. Don't know which part that is. It looks like a flare dispenser or something. It looks like counter munitions. But again, we've got this detail. Again, the riveting. Nice recessed detail there. This is the cowling or the glare shield for inside the cockpit and this is one of the static data probes on the front and that's pretty good that i'll show you my aftermarket parts but these are really fine they really you know they aren't chunky they look in scale they're perfectly adequate out out of the box 
and then we can see there's a bit of detail on the ejector seat um, it doesn't look too bad but again I've got aftermarket for that the cockpit top looks very basic to me what I'm trying to find is the console and that's probably on a different sprue let's open up the other bags and have a look at the other parts okay in that second bag we've got two off sprues identical uh, weapons of a sort they're actually the pylons and fuel drop tanks again with uh, look at the pylons really good detail uh, recessed and uh, also extruded details on the pylon looking quite impressive there's the comp the uh, first stage compressor or the fan on the engine intake so we've obviously got full engines that we'll be able to see through and that looks like uh, the core or the rear of the turbine and there's the fan there as well so that looks pretty good and we've got some air to air missiles i've forgotten the designation but these look really good that's in one piece as well so they've captured all the detail all you need to do is add on the fins let's have a look at the wheel hub detail not bad at all and also there's detail for the um, marks the molded marks on the rubber of the tires as well looks pretty good some smaller details as well nice and crisp and then we've got a hollow piece here which looks like the engine exhaust fairing okay this is uh, the very large sprue and this is the underneath of the fuselage here let's have a look again in detail at the uh, at the molding this is the only way to do this by the way is to have a piece like this when you've got a flat fuselage underneath um, you can't if you mold them on the fuselage halves you would not be able to mold in any of the detail so this is the reason they do this and I'm grateful for it because the detail looks again really really good here's the uh, cowlings for the engines again got a mixture of detail we've got the recessed panel lines and then we've got this riveting for the first time seen this in a photo you know maybe there are some other kits from Zvezda that previously had this riveting but one of the big criticisms of the mill 24 kits was the lack of that rivet detail and to see it on a kit is uh, it's really good it's really up there as well there's no deficiencies at all as far as i can see this is an interesting part Aircraft is designed, obviously, as a ground attacker and also to work off of um, remote air strips, grass strips, I think, even, possibly, you know, or, or like rough strips. So they've got a FOD uh, protection on the nose gear. And um, it's quite well depicted, to be honest. It looks, it looks really good. It certainly is fine, finely detailed. It doesn't look clunky whatsoever. I'm just looking at these fairings again. We've got the riveting again on it, very finely detailed. It's not overly done as well. It looks very much in scale. I'll just show you some other parts. It looks like that might be the nose landing gear strut. And that looks like it could be main landing gear wells with some detail on there. Not fantastic, but it's quite deep on this aircraft. Is there anything else to point out? Well, again, the wheels. Actually, I'm going to show you that. I did have a look at the instructions prior to that. The wheels here, you think they're in two halves, but they are not. You've got the outer faces of the wheels, and then you have to make up the actual, <laughs> the other parts from a multiple pieces. I'll try and find them in the sprue just in a second. Here we are. So I've gone back to the previous uh, smaller sprues. And then they are so the way that they've they've actually managed to create tread detail is by having that arrangement so two out the outer faces 
and then these are two halves of the wheel so it's a way to you know enhance the detail if it works or not you've got to deal with seams um, difficult to say I'll do a test run and I'll explain that with the aftermarket stuff that I've got as well so let's go back and have a look at the other parts okay we're looking at a very this is a large sprue this one the second largest sprue in the in the, in the kit this is the undersurface of the wings again we've got all this riveting on it look at the mass of pylons that this aircraft carries the air brakes are here and i think they have detailed them that you can show them deployed or otherwise let's have a look at the upper surface of the wings to show you again this incredible you know not incredible but like you know, grade A detailing, yeah, this is like as good as Tamiya, easily. Um, certainly much better than the likes of Airfix with their, you know, lack of detailing. So this this is really impressive to see this. Of course, the proof of the pudding is when we do the wash on it, but um, they're dark aircraft as well. But the, the reason, you know, the, the fact that they've taken steps to really enhance the surface detail of the models is um, you know it's really welcomed obviously it's really welcomed so looks very impressive so far now i'll show you the part that we've been waiting for okay so final sprue non-transparent of course is the fuselage halves and uh, yeah it looks <laughs> as we said looks really really quite good with all this detail all this fine panel lining and then as you go towards the rear of the aircraft this section here is heavily riveted and it is very fine to the touch if it shows up or not well we can see it in three dimensions and you can see it in the macro but the fact it was so glaringly missing from the the uh, mill mi24 kit and when you see it on here, it is just uh, just really great to see that they've um, taken account of the criticism to provide this. So this is, I would say, their best 48th scale kit that they've brought out so far. In terms of uh, detail, just go and check and see if there's anything inside here. There isn't. Uh, I was just having a look at the wheel bay, the main landing gear recesses and there's a little bit of detail in there but uh, i think these are quite crowded so it's quite difficult to see inside them of course we'll we'll find out um in a while and uh just hold on if you're watching this at the moment i'm going to trim off these parts off the sprue and just sort of get a rough sort of have a look at the fit just note the transparent parts are separately bagged and if you're familiar with Zvezda kits you'll know that their transparent parts are slightly flexible as you can see you can flex them they're not that very um, crispy transparent plastic but they're perfectly clear and they're absolutely excellent to work with it looks like we've got an option in terms of the nose cones which we've got space for. They've got a window there for the laser rangefinder. Looks like we've got a HUD there as well. The actual main canopy is detached itself. I'll just show you that, which again has this, if you can see it, it's got some depiction of riveting. And also I like the way that they have a sort of different texture to the areas that will be painted so uh, nothing wrong with these transparent parts perfectly crystal clear will be a pleasure to work with i'm going to show you the decal sheet now i've used zvezda decals before they are excellent nothing wrong with them they're perfectly thin you've got one sheet here which is for the weapons and the pylons and you can see the extensive markings for the the weaponry and the main marking sheet with all these colorful options 
for Czech, and I think this is Bulgarian or Romanian. Uh, forgive me, I'll check when we have a look at the colour detail. Now, I'm going to have to go back again. I see that they've, uh, Zvezda, pretty typically, they do this. The, the instrument panels are via decals, and from what I've seen in the previous kits, it's just a flat piece of plastic that these go on to. So I'm just going to double check and um, find the uh, cockpit uh, panel detail because I'm sure people are interested in that. Look at that shark's mouth. That's going to be a very attractive scheme. Again, colours are great. Uh, decals are easy to use and they are really nice and thin, unlike Tamiya ones. So yes, as I suspected, the instrument console is just a flat piece, piece of plastic on which you apply the decal. Uh, that precludes it from being, you know, as good as other kit manufacturers. But a lot of people are using the Quinta uh, instrument set, so some people won't be a problem whatsoever. But I think it would have been nice to have had that inside the box. But... Um, you know, um, just one of those things. Also, I'll just go back here as well. I just want to point out, it does have a boarding ladder as well. Um, and I should have pointed that out previously. So uh, let's have a look at the instructions now. Instructions from Zvezda in a staple together little booklet. You get the uh, a little bit of background um, in Russian language and also in English. And also, this is typical, and I do like this feature from Zvezda kits. You've got the option to depict the aircraft out of the box, flying, as in gear up, or in the second variant, you could have it on, you know, on landing gear, which is the very typical way that most kits are packaged. I, I think that's a good feature. And uh, thinking back now, I think I might get another one just to, depending on how this build goes, I might well want to build this one on the stand. I think it would be... Uh, quite an attractive display piece and also you can see the other sort of options that you get of course you can mix up the two as well between them so you don't need to follow the instructions to the letter we get the parts tree layout and it looks like there's actually some shaded out areas here for some of the weaponry which is interesting i think they're going to bring out another version this is the earlier sukhoi 25 and i think maybe there's something to do with the weaponry there is for a different aircraft i'm just speculating by the way okay first step pretty typical build up your cockpit the ejector seat it's made up of you know a few pieces not massively greatly detailed but at least there's some depiction of the harnesses etc in that step and then that gets bolted onto what will be the front nose gear bay and then straight across straight onto the construction of the fuselage itself getting that sandwiched in between there and then we also build up the trunking for the air intakes now it calls out yeah just one option here for that nose cone and I'm wondering why that is. There's some detail here for these uh, landing gear bays, the main landing gear bays. So you've got the bulkheads for it. Some detail there. It doesn't look too bad. You know, it's not exceptional. Let's not put it that way. But it does look pretty good. And I am impressed, actually, looking at the parts for the actual landing gear itself. Looks pretty good out of the box. And here we are. This is that, as I was mentioned, the underneath fuselage section is flat. And the only way that you can more detail on it is to have it as a separate part. So this join here is the most, probably the most critical part of the aircraft. And we're just going to have a look at that very shortly. We'll just do a quick dry fit and just have a quick look at how those parts will line up, hopefully no problems, which will make this kit very buildable. Got a stack of pylons going on the wings. And then we've got this option here again for the air brakes, which has, you know, not bad detail actually showing the air brakes deployed. Uh, the fact that they've incorporated that kit 
is again a really good and welcome feature I think for most modelers. Wings get joined on in a traditional way. I think also that will be the that portion of the wing there will be the upper surface of the fuselage, the dorsal surface. Separate rudder. And also, again, I'm speculating, the fact that you've got this part of the fin separate, is that something that would allow a different version of the uh, Sukhoi 25? I'm not too sure. I did have the option to purchase parts for the updated version but i just wanted this this one out of the box and then this is what i mentioned about the wheel wheels and tires being made of the separate parts so that they can have the tread detail how that works out i'm not too sure to be honest there we are there's the separate parts if you want to pose the aircraft in flight the actual gear bays you don't need to do any modification these are separate parts so there's no like cutting parts or filing and sanding and the fact that you've got them in the box. Quite welcome for people who want to pose aircraft in flight, I should think. And we see all that extensive weaponry um, caught out on this step here. I'll just point out as well, the stand isn't included. You have to buy that separately. I like the fact as well, you've got a boarding ladder which is entirely separate. It's not part of the aircraft. And then also on top of that, you've actually got the steps which are integral to the aircraft as well. Kind of interesting there. And also they give you some chocks as well. So if you want to make a little diorama, you've got a very bare minimum of parts to enable you to do that. Fairly extensive stenciling or uh, diagrams here to show you where you place all your stencils including the weaponry here and of course the underneath of the aircraft is full of stencils let's briefly have a look at the color uh, scheme profiles okay here's the scheme uh, the paint schemes which are in color as I mentioned so you get the layout uh, of note is that the only call outs for the colors are Zvezda and Tamiya and I am skeptical as to the color accuracy. So I would take these as a pinch of salt because the Zvezda colors, first of all, they're very, very difficult to come by. And then also they seem to be quite generic. They don't, they don't have the, um, I don't think that there will be reference to the actual browns and greens that are used by um, the Vives but um, schemes are very similar uh, the first aircraft is from 1988 uh, it goes back to the Soviet uh, deployment in Afghanistan actually at Bagram as well um, and this aircraft up to 2000 obviously this aircraft has been in service a long time continues to serve to this day but there is a modernized version uh, I think the most attractive is this one, 2004. Shark's mouth on it looks fantastic. Again, similar scheme. We've got this like light blue underneath, and then we've got the camouflage on top, which is either two or three tones. And then we've got some of the foreign operators, Czechoslovakian Air Force, and which one is it? It's Bulgarian. It's Bulgarian, so... Couple of different, quite a few different marking options, which of course is welcome. Um, I thought there might be a little bit more detail on the weapons. Maybe that was in the other part of the instructions. Okay, I'm going to quickly show you a quick dry fit of the parts now. Okay, I just did a bit of taping together. I just was interested to see how this bottom plate section goes on. The indication's pretty good. The fit looks reasonable yeah you're gonna have to pay a lot of attention into this area to make sure that basically in principle that you haven't got the floor part wider than the actual fuselage so take your time when you're, you're building this part it's probably best off i don't know how the instructions show it but when i go to this stage i'll certainly be wanting to join fuselage halves together and immediately go on to joining this floor plate so i haven't got any disparities between those joints but indications are quite good here at this stage 
Um, in terms of design, this is the best way I think you could make this aircraft uh, without going to enormous cost of, you know, entirely, um, you would have to have a, a basically an entire slide molded fuselage to, to incorporate that detail. But um, it's, it's quite well done. You see, it's not that big an aircraft as well. You know, quite a smallish sort of size. Um, should be quite an interesting build. Yes, I will be building this, a bit more on that later. Let's, uh, I'm going to introduce you, of course, to the aftermarket parts that I selected for, for this project. The first set I've got is, this is included within the pre-order from Armour, is uh, the fantastic Quintus Studio 3D cockpit decal. So, obviously, the advantage here is that in terms of detailing the cockpit, I've got it ready to go straight onto those flat panels. And of course the Quinter um, quality is unbeatable really, to be honest. And of course it's, um, you know, an excellent and easy upgrade to this kit and not that, not too expensive really. Here we've got the Chrysler, the ejection seat. This is from Seal model kits, not too expensive but uh, molded on harnesses as well. And that'll be quite a nice upgrade as to what is included within the box. Should be nice detail. Obviously need to check the fit, but should be compatible with this uh, Zvezda kit. And with some metal detail parts, these are aftermarket alpha probes. Just, uh, these were a precaution in case the included kit parts were a bit clunky, which they certainly are not, but uh, should be a worthwhile addition to the, to the model. These are 3D printed details from temp models. Again, we've got the alpha probes and pitot tubes, static, static tubes. Um, also some of the uh, radio altimeters, some of the... I believe these are, yeah, for the pylons, possibly. Static wicks, all 3D printed, very fine, very delicate. Aftermarket detail set, uh, aftermarket decal set. Vosdushne Cosmos uh, Slujba Rasi, markings for um, hero aircraft, Roman Filipov. Um, I I think he was a casualty in the um, recent sort of conflict in Syria, uh, flying Su-25s. And there's, a, I think I've got some reference photographs of the actual aircraft. I don't know who the manufacturer is. Not decided on which markings I'm going to use. These were a freebie in any case. Okay, despite the very unusual colour, these are free fall bombs and they actually have magnets included and magnet sets included it'd be easy just to buy the magnets really wouldn't it i think these are the sway braces for the for for the uh, free fall bombs the pylon set you can see there there's the recess that the magnet goes on to and then the free fall bombs themselves don't have a rec recess for, for the magnet. I don't know. Ah, my mistake. Right. Okay. The way it's meant to work is the magnets go into the pylon and the other magnets go into the, um, the wing. So the actual pylon comes off. So the idea is you mount all the free fall bombs on the pylons themselves. I want to just have some alternatives. These are very very finely cast the fins as you can see and of course I have to be quite careful separating them off of the casting points but uh, just alternative armament um, for the Su-25 because there is none of the, that type of weaponry included within the box and of course you can't see much I'm gonna have to trim some of this away 3d printed nose uh, pilot is free 
and then 3D printed uh, main landing gear, nose landing gear. Um, fantastic. This is the reason I, I, I was convinced I would buy a 3D printer and now I'm convinced I'm not because it's just easier to buy this stuff than it is to ever spend the amount of time whatever it is trying to design this stuff so I'll just trim away a bit of the um, protective casing as it were to just show you the detail on these 3d prints okay I've just removed the outer portion of that protective cage you can see all the many many tree support branches um, it's not that difficult I've done this before on these 3d printed parts quite easy to detach Obviously, don't get confused over what makes up brake lines, hydraulic lines of the landing gear. That's the beauty of these uh, 3D printed parts. Everything is done as one in resin. Um, this looks absolutely amazing. There's the FOD guard already attached. All the detailing done looks incredible. And I gather these are drop fit into the kit. Um, look absolutely incredible to supplement that of course um, I'll just show you in a second um, some resin wheels and here is the pilot I think this is the way that figures are going to go I'm surprised oh, I think they already have haven't they um, 3d printed pilot stunning detail excellent I will take a bit more time to paint this guy up to have him posed with the Sukhoi 25 Really, really nice addition. Again, this was a freebie as well from Armour Hobbies. It looks absolutely amazing. So let me just quickly show you the final detail set. There we are. These are the uh, wheels and tyres, specifically designed for this 3D print set. I'll just show you that the obviously the hob detail is mounted onto the actual landing gear there. So the backside is totally open so it should just slip straight on bit of weight on wheels effect as well on the main gear amazing tread detail sidewall detail um, and of course i don't need to deal with um, sticking together the uh, four pieces of plastic that make up the wheels in the zvezda kit but um, i will just to show you the comparison but obviously we all know that that this sort of detail is just unbeatable really really does look good so anyways that rounds off the review of the Zvezda Su25 of course I will be building it I just want to remind anybody that's watching I do have a Patreon if you want to be involved in the community you will notice that my aircraft builds are all music videos but on my Patreon I do weekly vlogs which is me talking explaining and of course if you're interested you want to have some uh, input onto the channel um, consider subscribing to patreon so anyways this is the bear hope you enjoyed the review and i'm out of here